So I'm excited to be on this panel with everyone and to help Monterey here. I think this is really disruptive um, technology and having that marriage of not only being able to image what's going on in the nucleus, but then translate that to exactly how you're going to disassemble the nucleus from the femto side and from the phaco side is sort of game changing. It takes things to a new level. It allows us to automate things that otherwise we would be thinking about every single little step. So I think that's really the key issue here. We know that if we soften the nucleus with femtosecond laser, it actually allows us to decrease inflammation in the eye, decrease damage to the endothelial cells. You know, we can take out the nucleus more effectively. We have less flow in the eye, less energy in the eye, and that's really a benefit to our patients. And it makes for efficiency in the OR. And so if we can maximize that, if we can use the power of imaging to understand exactly what the density of the nucleus is, and that marry that to our technique and the fragmentation pattern, and then take that into the next step, which is the phaco portion, and then have already parameters that allow that to automatically change what you're doing with phaco, you can maybe minimize the amount of energy that's there, the total energy, laser energy and phaco energy, and maximize efficiency. So that's really what this is all about. And it happens because of what Rob already touched on before, because you have this amazing imaging that allows you to see even every single layer of the nucleus, that you can look at the density of these different layers, you can quantify it, and the beauty of it is it, you're not quantifying it, you're not looking at it, Ally is. You can take that information in the same technology and translate it to maximize the fragmentation pattern, and that can also be married to exactly what's gonna happen with the early, with the FACO within the same machine. So that's what we're working on. That's this product, or the current project that we're working on, is trying to figure out what are those parameters, how can we marry that, and it's gonna be different for different surgeons, maybe different techniques, but how can we look at those densities, look at different FACO fragmentation patterns, and different FACO settings and maximize efficiency and minimize energy. So here we, we can see, and how many of you in the audience have used and looked at these density images on the lens are? I think this is one of the amazing things to see because you see structures within the lens that you really didn't know. And we know that sometimes you see a patient at the slit lamp and it looks pretty clear, the patient's seeing pretty well, but it's a very yellow lens. And when you get into the OR, you see just how dense that lens is. So visual acuity is not always a great indicator of the density of the lens, but this is. And this helps you to really understand, number one, maximizing the fragmentation pattern, which is what I've been doing already, but then having the power of phaco behind it is really gonna be amazing. So this is, this is where AI comes in, really. It's looking at information that we can't quantify you know, in a way that machine learning can. So Ally can quantify that density, take that information, translate it to a fragmentation pattern, and translate that to FACO settings. And there's no way that we are going to be as good as, as human beings in doing, taking and assembling all that information and maximizing efficiency and outcomes. So by taking a team that works with all these things and putting it together, we're gonna be able to do that, and that is really game-changing. So that's the project. It's looking at early and using the early FACO in combination with physicians, with surgeons, with the R&D team, with the team that's out there in your OR to put together patterns and FACO energy settings with the goal of reaching zero FACO energy for all patients and all levels of density or at least minimizing it to the most, or the, the highest level that we can. And I think this is one of the really cool things. I mean, I think once you get familiar with the LensR platform, in my OR, it's, or my laser room, I should say now, it's, it's very efficient, but I cannot imagine what it's gonna be like to be two to four times faster than it is currently. Just the fact that you have those six cameras taking the image at once, which is the part that we're waiting around the most for during the whole procedure. 
is amazing. And to be able to then take that, not even have to think about what the density is or anything, know it's already maximally fragmented the way I want it to be. And then my FACO settings are just exactly where I want them to be for this particular individualized case is going to increase efficiency even more. I'm James Lehman, thank you. Uh, uh, we uh, did have the opportunity to test drive, not the Pharos, but the one that's FDA approved here in the US. Uh, and we did it at the same time where a team from Lenzar came to our surgery center for two weeks and we uh, optimized some phaco fragmentation patterns. And I like to speak to that, but the machine did great. After really a few cases, we were used to it. The hand piece is straight, it's not a bent tip. So ergonomically, it took a little getting used to that. And the tip is a little bigger on the FACO needle, but once the, you kind of got the parameters dialed in for that, it worked really nicely. So it was the generation before the Pharos, and we were happy with it. So even with the Pharos that's going into the Ally, I'm sure it's not going to be a stumbling block to kind of new adaption. Um, Kathleen went over this, but we all know that the more we can fragment and soften a lens, the less FACO power we have to use in the eye, and we have a happier cornea, happier patients. Uh, we know the Linzar can take pictures and, uh, and kind of uh, stratify how much power is going to be needed. So we talked about this. Uh, and so we did a small observational study to look at um, how we can optimize a fragment, fragment pattern on divide and conquer, which is the technique that I do. Um, and so it's a multi-center observational study. And we did cataract patients who already signed up for surgery with the Linzar. And then the, we, during the case, the lens are would stratify the density of the nucleus and then choose a fragmentation pattern. And we looked at the uh, effective FACO time and total case time and how the pre-optimization versus the optimized played out. So, so these, this is some cases here uh, side by side. Um, I had a different slide. I guess it didn't transfer over. But um, the difference in the pattern is basically the pre-optimized is just a simple pie cut into four pieces. And the optimized is the same, but with many cylinders in it to so soften the nucleus and also use a little more energy to make it easier to crack. And um, you can see here in this video, um, unfortunately it's not edited enough to kind of cut to the chase, but it becomes much easier to, to uh, divide and conquer after the optimization. So this is uh, the two groups and kind of how they played out in terms of cataract density. You can see they're similar. That's the, me that's the main gist of this slide. So. And kind of this is the, uh, the, the important part, basically that uh, we were able to decrease the effective FACO time by, uh, FACO power by 27% by using the new optimization patterns uh, at all grades of the cataract. And here it is kind of st uh, stratified by different cataract densities, but you can see overall the blue being higher than the green showing that we're using less uh, effective FACO uh, emulsification time once we've had the, uh, the new optimized fragmentation patterns. And in the next talk, Dr. Maverick's going to show a little bit more about the, the pattern and the, and the surgery. This slide shows that we're able to complete 94% of the patients we're able to do the surgery under 10 minutes. Um, and so they're working on some data looking at the different uh, pre versus post optimization here too. So, so kind of in summary, we were able to show that even adopting a new FACO machine for these cases by uh, optimizing the FACO pattern, uh, the fragmentation pattern, we're able to decrease the amount of energy we had to use at the time of cataract surgery. So uh, again, we were successful in this observational trial and uh, I'll turn it over to Dr. Maverick. Thank you. So we got to use uh, the early uh, for a total of two weeks and, and bringing a new machine and a team in is always a little stressful, but um, it, it was you know, in the end, in, in very fun, and it was, uh, you know, a, a great experience. Um, I commend Don and, and Michael for really knowing the machine so well that they made it extremely easy to adapt. You know, I, I would liken it almost to um, at the end of the week where, you know, dad throws you the, the keys to the Porsche and says, hey, let's take this for a ride because, you know, we call optimization, but it, it really, uh, we really adapted it very, very quickly. And so uh, this is really just looking at, at one case, but uh, started out the week uh, with a 1.8 tip and, and sculpting and cracking uh, pre-optimization. And then uh, we changed parameters little by little and, and 
uh, went to a smaller inner radius, um, went to a, a little higher energy profile, uh, increased the tip, and each, you know, with each case came, became more and more confident in both the FACO and then the, the fragmentation patterns. And um, this is just an example, I think it was later in the week, and this was a pretty thick cataract. It was uh, five millimeters thick and uh, had, had rated it at about a three or four. Uh, the, the corollary to the category rating on the laser you have to kind of, you know, get your own little, um, you know, gestalt as to um, how, how dense you think it is, which is so useful looking at the ultrasound. And you have the ability to change it to a denser mode if you need to. And so at the end of the week, uh, I, I evolved to kind of this pattern where they were very, uh, the rings were very close together and had a, a cross chop across. And um, that, that just outlines the, the standard capsular axis was about 5.5. And then this was the cross chop. Uh, and then the fragmentation rings we brought in uh, pretty close. And, and this was fun and, and speaks to how well the new machine is. I would say, okay, I want you know, another half millimeter closer. I want uh, you know, the, the, eye, the eye a little, you know, the aspiration a little, uh, you know, a little up. And, and with each step, we just made incremental changes. And, and in about two days, uh, it, it it was really humming along. And then that's what the total overlay looked like at the end. Um, and this was a pretty dense cataract. Um, this shows the, the optimized pattern and the, the Femto uh, doing its thing. Um, it added maybe uh, five to 10 seconds um, with the additional Femto time, but it, at the end it saved you know, several minutes in the OR. And so uh, you know, pretty standard loosening up the lens. Uh, it, one thing with, with some of these patterns, and we hadn't figured all this out yet, where um, early on I did have a little harder time loosening up the lens, um, but you know that that got better, and I don't you know, totally understand the physics of it. But the you know the, the gas bubble seems to be released in a different place, and you know this is some of the the things we have to figure out, which is fun. Um, and so it, with, with that pattern, it would would loosen up the lens, and then that core right in the middle, I found that if I could get that core out, uh, just with a, either a little FACO or aspiration, uh, the, the rings around it would, would literally just kind of fall in and, and melt. Um, the, the nice thing about that pattern is there's, there's no sharp edges either. And so, um, you know, once the FACO gets going and uh, you'll see the, the nucleus and, and the rest of the lens just really almost peels away um, and you can, you know, do, do it with very little FACO power. So it would basically uh, work, work on the center of the lens and there, there are a couple of times where I'd actually turn the FACO piece over and just pull out that core um, and I think I'm trying to do it here. And um, once that, that middle core is out, um, the, the whole lens just kind of collapsed on itself and, and throughout the week ended up using less and less FACO power. Um, you know, dur during the week, the, the support staff uh, and, and the technical staff was just outstanding. I and mean, I, can't, I can't say enough uh, for, uh, you know, knowing the machine very well and just helping us. I, I would say, okay, I wanted to do this. And then, uh, you know, they'd make several adjustments. And, and we did it, you know, a little, little bit at a time. And, you know, you can just see the, the first quadrant here just kind of melts out. And then, um, I'll start using the chopper, and w once there's a little room in the bag, all the rest of these pieces li literally just peeled off. And so uh, that, that's part of what allowed to use a lot less FACO power. Good afternoon, dear friends, and I would like to share our initial experience uh, using the Faro's uh, Partly FACO machine with the Lensar customized fragmentation technique. So as we all know that uh, the Lensar has an automated cataract analysis uh, through Schlamplug imaging. And you can actually categorize the density of the cataract depending upon the um, imaging of the nucleus, the epinucleus and the cortex. Yeah. So you, you can classify it into five categories depending upon the density of the nucleus. And uh, again, depending upon the visibility of the epinucleus or endonucleus structure, uh, it varies from category one to category five, and you can uh, 
put in your uh, fragmentation patterns uh, depending upon the density of the nucleus and customize um, the fragmentation. This is uh, the first case uh, of a 72 year old female uh, with a grade three cataract. And here we are using the interleaxis axis uh, and a toric IUL. So you can see the interleaxis axis there. And um, that's the capsulotomy uh, followed by the fragmentation. I use uh, two chop to divide it into four fragments and then the uh, cylindrical patterns. Uh, here I'm actually using the callisto to again verify, re-verify the placement of the interleaxis. And that's the hydro dissection. And you can see the, that the nucleus is quite dense. And that is the, I'm using the pharos. And you can see the classical uh, tip which has been described. And I do a direct chop because of the Pre-fragmentation, uh, this is the actual time, uh, it is not sped up. So you can see it's very easy to separate the dense fragments. And you have an ex uh, excellent hold and uh, it's very easy to remove these fragments because the uh, cylindrical pattern actually makes it into very small pieces and then you, the whole nucleus uh, is removed very efficiently. How, do you, how did you find this compared to the other machines? Uh, yes, um, I find it quite efficient uh, and um, the chamber is quite stable uh, and I'm able to evacuate the fragments quite rapidly. So that's the placement on the interleaxis, axis uh, and this is a feature which I like with the lenser because I can place the a lens. I, I, in fact, if you noticed, I inject it under BSS. I don't use viscoelastic and this reduces the incidence of rotation. And post-op, I'm able to verify that the lens is on axis without any extra software or extra machines. I don't have to go back to the charts. I know that it's on axis. Uh, let's go on to the next case, which, uh, I'm sorry, these are the parameters. You can see that uh, uh, the chop, I've used uh, two planes uh, and then the uh, cylinders uh, with an outer radius of 2.5 and an inner radius of 0.4. The ultrasound time was uh, 3.2 seconds. The effective time, FECO time was 1.24 for this density of cataract, which is quite low. This was a 64 year old female, a grade four cataract. Uh, here, uh, you're using a monofocal IOL with arcuate keratotomies, which were planned. And that's the capsulotomy followed by the automated pattern here also, because of the denser cataract, we're using the two planes, um, uh, chops, which make it into four uh, fragments, and then the cylinders. And uh, that's a 2.8 mm incision, which I'm using. I go in and do the hydro dissection, and you can see that uh, the nucleus is quite dense. It's a grade four nucleus. And that's the Pharaoh's machine. I'm able to chop it directly. So you don't have to use any sculpting techniques because it's already pre-fragmented, separates very easily the denser cataracts also. And then I'm able to separate it into four pieces, bring it into the safe zone, and you can see that uh, it's very easy to emulsify the fragments because uh, of the cylindrical patterns, they are very small and they get very easily emulsified. Uh, this is the actual time taken uh, and usually the FECO part is less than a minute. And that's the um, IA. I also do a hydro polish and this is a Acrisoft IUL being inserted into the bag under BSS. And you can see that the cornea is a very clear day one because the amount of FACO energy used is minimal with this customized fragment. That's, those are the incisions. Uh, so I open it, but uh, since we are having slight overcorrection uh, that Dr. Sheetal uh, presented, we are trying to now uh, look at uh, the results without opening the incisions. So that's again um, a topic for debate. So the, these are the parameters, uh, chop again, uh, two plane, uh, chop, and then uh, cylinders. 
inner radius 0.4, outer radius 2.5, and uh, that's the USG time, 7.3 seconds for this dense cataract. Effective echo time was, uh, EPT was 2.84 um, seconds, and uh, those are the AK parameters used, incision depth was 90%. Um, so these were the two cases that I want to present. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.